East Station, just a few and meters down. It, it, Charlie, it did there in Majeng. Oh. <laughs> for how long has it been there? For, for like two, three days. For three days. So on my way home yesterday, I saw some gentlemen looking like they were fixing it. <laughs> This morning, Charlie, the thing is still there. And you know the thing, there's no street lights on that stretch. That stretch is... So and so you could run into it at night. So let's be each other's keeper. Let's do the right thing. And some of these don't even have triangles. Mm. No. So they just no. abandon the... Vi- I mean, I'll, I'll tell you one. Where was I? I was driving from Lakeside towards the main junction. Mm-hmm. Okay. So from the Lakeside into the new junction where there's the star bites. Yeah. Some wise person has decided to offload sand. I think he's going to build something in his house. <laughs> and he decides that... He will take half of the road. So he pours, like, there's a whole load of sand in the middle of the road. And he's driven off and gone home to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like, how? 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 And people are driving. So when you, somebody's coming from the, 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 the junction, they have to now come into your lane. Mm. Oh. I mean, why do we That's do these things? It's so dangerous. Charlie, it's not good. Let's <laughs> stop. Let's repent. Okay, July is ending. Let's change. God, Let's start with the assembly graphic. and a dental assembly, please. Mm. These two things should mm. not be there till end of day. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, let's start with the headlines. All right, the Daily Graphic. Lynching of 90-year-old woman. Mm. Kafaba chief arrested. 13 others on the run. President describes action as barbaric. Mm. And 34 COVID-19 rapid test kits fail validation test. That's the FDA. Oh. Yes. Oh. And no blanket mop-up after registration, says the EC. Oh. Yep, also at the MTN. MTN is challenging the NCA directive in court. Mm. Okay, let me start with the Chronicle. Because yesterday we read a story from the Western region about um, Galamsey operators um, making the police or the Operation Vanguard team run away. That was the story. Now, the Chronicle says DCE defies presidential order. Galamsey is a source of livelihood. That's the lead story for the Chronicle this morning. Mm. I'll make a good case for the John and Jane ticket, Professor Pukwajiman. Court cancels UEW pro VC election hmm. and President fulfills campaign promise to the North. All right. The Daily Guide. Kafaba chief arrested over witch killing. <clears throat> so they're echoing that headline. First timers swarm voters register. That's yes. Jane Mensa. Yep. Um, the, the victim is pictured here, the victim of that assault up mm. north, and the Kafaba chief as well is pictured there. Uh, 82 financial institutions collapsed under NDC. Mm-hmm. This is what uh, Vice President Dr. Baumia is saying. Mm. The Volta Regional Minister is defending COVID-19 measures in place and uh, the Nairi endorses four more for Nana. Mm. The finder, Mohammed's track record in office abysmal. This is Dr. Baumia. Same page, Financial Services Authority among Mohammed's 10 campaign promises. Narelugu gets 4.9 million Ghana CD water project. President admonishes residents to protect water bodies. The Ghana Health Service says they will publish an outcome of hydroxychloroquine use mm. on COVID-19 patients. Mm. We are waiting for that. And court crushes UEW pro-VC elections, orders a new election. All right. The Daily Statesman. 82 financial institutions collapsed under Mahama with no payments to affected customers. Mm-hmm. And three uh. students on scholarship to India make Ghana proud. Also, 106,842 residents benefit from Narugu Water Project. Health alert on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. Hepatitis B birth dose shortage hits the country. Hey. 147,000 newborns likely to be affected. Okay. On the same page, COVID-19, FDA rejects 34 substandard rapid diagnostic test kits. Mm. President condemns lynching of 90-year-old woman at Kafaba. Orders arrest of culprits. And 78 voter region markets, lorry parks, others disinfected. Okay. Right. Business and Financial Times. AGI advocates flexibility with two billion Ghana CD guarantee scheme. Says it should not be subjected to cumbersome banking appraisals. That's mm. the big headline there on the front page. MFI's survival hangs in the balance as COVID-19 disrupts trade. Oh. And the GCAA to forcefully remove masks that are impeding operations at WA airports. Okay. okay. Now, the new crusading guide. Occupy Ghana pushes AG to criminalize intra-party vote buying during primaries and elections. Voters' registration blues. Ato Fossen's macho men allegedly terrorizing registrants arrested. COVID-19, Temaport records sharp revenue fall. 
and three students make Ghana proud in India. The Herald, Akufuado's bodyguard, threatens to unleash violence on NDC man. Also, vice presidential slot, not the preserve of economists. That's Professor Kwisi Potri mm. speaking on that. Yeah. Ewa Dalkon and Alex Mould adopt constituencies for the NDC and NDC running mates to focus on human capital development. Mm. Now, the Ghanaian Observer front page promised to pay DK a men's good customers. Baumia Blast Mahama says 82 financial institutions collapsed under him. Ekufadu commissions the Naleurugu water supply project. December 2020 election. NPP doesn't need favors from EC. This is according to Sami Oku. And uh, UEW Pro VC issues and the disinfection in water region also on the front page. Let me give you a few headlines online at uh, 638. Citynewsroom.com. Ewutu Senya East Group petitions parliament to suspend Hawa Kumsen. Also, concerned drivers union unhappy with directives to reduce transport fares. Meanwhile, government of Ghana must protect us from Guta. This is Nigerian traders. And Baumia says 2020 polls will be about performance in government and not promises. If you go to City Business News, stories there. BOG to build additional reserves to deal with city depreciation. Also, we need free water supply. Ghana Hotels Association to government and disperse stimulus package quickly. Tourism Federation urges government. People are looking for that money. MyJoinOnline.com, the lead story, locks to Auditor General Domelevo's office changed while he's on leave. Meanwhile, Kojo Asante describes this as ridiculous. Other stories, Rollins did not discuss the Nakuridu's presidential interest, hence her loss. This is Kwame Na Ahoy in his new book. And NDC campaign spokesperson clarifies public confusion about Nana Opokwa Jiman's adoring speech. Star FM, nine-year-old boy commits suicide in Koforidia. Also, transport fares go down 10%. And I reject a running mate offer for fresh faces. Kwesi Bocho speaking after the outdooring. If you go to GNA, they're leading with the voters who judge us by our record. Bawumia. Also, COVID-19 infections gradually decline, according to Dr. Kuma Baji. And as you read, President inaugurates Narego water supply. Now, let me take you to Ghana Report. There's an interesting headline there. The nine medical prisoners and their babies at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. It's an interesting report. And then the locks to Auditor General's office also making the news there. Let me take you to three international websites quickly. Trump sticks by discredited coronavirus treatments. This is the hydroxychloroquine controversy. BBC leading with that story. Other stories of concern, Hong Kong hospitals face collapse as outbreak grows. Mm. Meanwhile, scaled back Hajj pilgrimage due to start. So this is a socially distanced version. Now, U.S. deaths rise as six states see new cases, record cases. We're still talking coronavirus, people. Now, let me take you finally to Bloomberg because there are a couple of stories there about Ghana. Ghana's finance minister says global investors are unfair to Africa. This is the lead story. After helping to secure a debt freeze, a former banker says deeper reforms are needed. And this is Ken Ofreata speaking to Bloomberg as well. Let's start with what you have, Kukui. What do you have for us? All right. On the front page of the Daily Graphic, the mm. lynching of the 90-year-old woman. Still and the, the president, big story. Yes, he has harsh words mm. for those involved in this. The chief of Kafaba in the East Gonja municipality mm. in the Savannah region, Kafaba Wura. Seidu Yahaya mm -hmm. has been arrested by the Regional Police Command in connection with the lynching of a 90-year-old woman who was accused of being a witch. Mm. The police have also mounted an intensive search for 13 others who are on the run. According to the Regional Police Commander, Deputy Commissioner of Police, Mr. Enoch Edutrum Bidiakon, the statement of the Kafa Bawura has been taken and he's in custody to be arraigned today. Mm. He'll be charged with conspiracy hmm. to commit murder. Meanwhile, yeah. Shraj is questioning the low pace of investigation into the lynching. This story is on citynewsroom.com. Commissioner on Human Rights and Administrative Justice has questioned the slow pace of investigations being conducted by the police in the death of Equia Dente in the Savannah region. Now, the Commissioner Joseph Wittal in a City News interview said the time has come for the state to take action on protecting elderly citizens. Very quickly, just uh, in the same graphic, you mm -hmm. can read uh, this column by Elizabeth Ohini, a mm -hmm. veteran journalist, and mm -hmm. she draws parallels between the killing of Equia Dente and what happened to George Floyd mm. in the United States. And, uh, mm. It's a very interesting column. Let's just take a few excerpts. Mm -hmm. Please take time to read it, page 10 of the graphic, if you can. Mm -hmm. She says, to be an old woman in this country is to be at risk, and there is no hiding place from any part of our society mm -hmm. when it comes to those who would see you as a witch. Mm. She also says that more than half 
the class of our brightest young people, hmm. medical students, say they believe in witchcraft. Hmm. And she suspects a fair percentage of medical doctors are also willing to see a witch in an old woman. Hmm. Priests believe in witchcraft. Policemen believe in witchcraft. Hmm. Teachers believe in witchcraft. Hmm. Journalists believe in witchcraft. Oh, Every time anyone is going through a difficult phase, hmm. witches are the reason. Wow. Let's come back into the other stories, yes. yes. Um, I want to share the Times Lee story this morning mm -hmm. about hepatitis B and newborns. Mm. Now, the story says about 147,000 newborns stand the risk of being exposed okay. to hepatitis B this year due to the non availability of the birth dose wow. to avert the infection in the country. Hmm. The acting program manager of the National Viral Hepatitis Control Program of the Ghana Health Service said of the number 90 percent may actually end up being infected as the burden of the disease continues to rise among pregnant women wow he explained that pregnant women contributed to the high hepatitis b, b um burden mm. and according to him we need to do whatever we can to prevent this he says that though newborns are immunized against hepatitis b six weeks after birth mm. the administration of the birth dose vaccine would be a game changer in the fight against the virus. Did he tell us why there was a shortage? No, the story doesn't mention that. But okay. the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kumabwaji, in an earlier statement to mark the Hepatitis B Day, mm. admitted that the implications of HBV was quite dire for the country, mm. as there remain challenges in scaling up interventions to prevent okay. transmission. Okay, you read something about RDT yes. test kits failing. This is serious, Bernard. Charlie. The Food and Drugs Authority, FDA, mm. says that none... Wow. I repeat, none wow. of the 34 rapid diagnosis test kits submitted for validation wow. has met the national COVID-19 RDT testing requirements. Wow. There have been concerns and calls from sections of the public for the use of RDT kits to test for the coronavirus disease, mm -hmm. particularly when polymerase chain reaction, that's the PCR kits, mm -hmm. were running out. Some scientists believe that the rapid test kits can play a significant role in the national response. Um, Briefing the Ministry of Information yesterday, the Chief Executive Officer of the FDA, Mrs. Delise Darkon, hmm. said, based on the national validation guidelines, an RDT kit is supposed to have both sens sensitivity rate and speci specificity rate mm -hmm. of 99%. Mm -hmm. She explained that when people identify people who are positive or have ever tested positive for the virus, that's mm. also known as a true positive, that's what the sensitivity rate is. Specificity determines people who have never been exposed to the virus. Mm -hmm. But according to them, none of the test kits that they've tested wow. have met the standard. Now, still from Patikuma Bawaji, two things. GAS to publish outcome of hydroxychloroquine use, use on COVID-19 yeah. patient story is... Uh, In the find as yes, well. Um, us the story says the Ghana Health Service says it is monitoring the performance of hydroxychloroquine for treating COVID-19 patients and will soon share the data with the public. Mm -hmm. The Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kumar Bawaji, announced this in Accra yesterday when he presented the country's COVID-19 case counts and management. He also updates. admitted to the use of zinc and zithromax as yeah. treatment for persons <coughs> infected with COVID-19. And while we are at it, uh, BBC's lead story is that Trump sticks by discredited coronavirus treatment. <laughs> so whilst <laughs> in some parts of the world, hydroxychloroquine is seen as not the real quality uh, treatment. Here we are still waiting to get the information from the GHS. Kofi, mm -hmm. what else do you have for us? All right, let's go to the Daily Guide quickly. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. We are opening up our country. Yes. They are actually scaling back a bit mm -hmm. more. So, mm -hmm. Kenya extends coronavirus curfew, restricts alcohol sales. Mm -hmm. Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, mm -hmm. has extended a nightly curfew and banned alcohol sales in restaurants mm -hmm. as part of a bid to halt a steep rise in coronavirus cases. Mm -hmm. In a stern televised address to the nation on Monday, <laughs> Kenya Kenyatta said a countrywide curfew from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. will remain in place for another 30 days mm. and, quote, there shall be no sale of alcoholic beverages or drinks in eateries and restaurants over the same period. But get this. Mm -hmm. Look at their numbers. The total number of infections in the country has tripled in the past month, mm -hmm. rising to 17,975. Okay. And their death toll from COVID-19 is 285. Well, we it means they have more deaths than us, even though we have more, many cases. more cases. Yeah. Yes. So every country is dealing with it their own way. Mm -hmm. Now, the big story in Ghana, again, is about transport unions and fares. So yep. the story is that transport fares to be reduced by 10% effective August the 1st, according to the Chamber of Co Petroleum Consumers. Now, Duncan Amma said this is in respect to the fact that the president in his last address to the nation 
ease restrictions as far as social distancing in public transport system is concerned. Now, the driver union, some of them are not happy. A story on citynewsroom.com says, Concerned drivers union say they are happy with the directive to reduce transport fares. The story says the leadership of the CDU is unhappy with the latest directive to reduce transport fares by 10%. The drop meant fare prices, fares have increased by 5% in aggregate since the COVID-19 pandemic struck. We are not happy with the 5% left for us. The union vice chairman David Aguado told City News in an interview. They had earlier increased the fares by 30% in clear disregard to the 15% approved by the government. And the latest drop came after the president announced that vehicles could now take full capacity. Okay, so the Chronicle continues their stories on Galamse. Yes. And they've um, been publishing stories on page three for the past week or so. Galamse right. is our source of livelihood. Mm. This story is by Richard, also a channel in Kumase. Mm-hmm. And he writes that following the massive pollution of our water bodies and the destruction of our forest cover through illegal mining, the president set up Operation Vanguard to mm-hmm. fight the menace. Though some successes were achieved during the initial stages, um, water levels, uh, water cleanliness and turbidity levels uh, be, be started getting worse as the people went back to the bush to start doing illegal mining. Now, it has emerged through a video that has gone viral on social media that the district chief executive for Amancia South, hmm. Mr. William Asanti Bediako, is one of those supporting the trade. Speaking at the commissioner of a toilet facility at Tonto Chrome recently, he said he had been vilified and disgraced on a number of occasions by his party people on radio that he supports Galamse. Mm-hmm. And speaking in Chi, which has been translated into English by this reporter, the DC said, Why would I not support Galamse? Had it not been Galamse, we would not have had the story building at Manso. Hmm. Had it not been Galamse and hard working nature of the people of Manso, the youth of Manso would not have been able to purchase a car worth 1 billion cities. If some people like us are jealous of Galamse activities, I, Bediako, is of the opinion that Galamse is a profession of the people of Manso and that is a source of livelihood. Wow. Now, this is the DC. Gone, yes, the people has gone ahead to publish the whole transcript of the video on page three. So wow. if you want to uh, know more. Okay, now I wanted you to do a bit of <coughs> politics. Uh, Baumia is talking, mm-hmm. Akufado has commissioned some water projects where he also endorsed Baumia no, and no, all those still things. Is, still in the news yes, well. so let's just oh. run through some of those if you have them. Okay. I have here the president commissioned the Nalego water project mm-hmm. and constructed on a sustainable rural water and sanitation project. This is citynewsroom.com. Speaking at the commission on Tuesday, President Akufado said the sustainable rural water and sanitation project has been implemented in 11 out of the 16 regions of the country and has been financed by a 47 million dollar credit facility from the world bank now um dr baumia says mohammed struck record in office abysmal mm-hmm. <coughs> this is on page eight of the finder the mm. story says vice president dr mohammed baumia has reminded former president john mohammed that the 2020 presidential elections is a choice between his eight-year record as vice president and president and the three-and-a-half-year record of Nanu Kufado as president. Mm-hmm. Former President Mahama has been making a <clears> series <throat> of promises in an attempt to woo Ghanaians. But in a post on his official Facebook page, Dr. Baumia has reminded the former president that Ghanaians will judge him by his terrible record as president, not by his newfound promises. And then um, they go on to... There's actually something here on that. So, you know, Charles Edu Bahin went to parliament yesterday and said that more than 96% of depositors who had their monies locked up from the banking sector in the cleanup had been fully paid. And he said that 20% of the monies were paid in cash, while 80 were paid in bonds. Now, his comments come <coughs> less than a day after the former president, who is seeking to return to power, promised to pay the monies within a year if elected in 2020. So this is uh, sort of putting the two stories together, what the government yeah. is saying and what Mahama is saying. And uh, Mahama actually said that you set up a financial services authority. And that is captured by the finder. Says former President John Mahama says the next NDC government would establish a financial services authority, as in other economies, which would be responsible for ensuring that consumer financial markets work for consumers, providers, and the economy as a whole. Right. Professor Kwesi Boche <coughs> is speaking. This mm-hmm. is in the Herald. Ghana's longest serving finance minister and one of those tipped for the running mate nomination of the National Democratic Congress mm-hmm. has rubbished claims that having an academic as a vice president will be a difficult ticket for Ghanaian electorates to buy into in the run up to the 2020 general elections. Mm-hmm. Professor Boche described Professor Nana Jenopoku Ajiman as meeting every requirement of a vice president for Ghana because 
because she's a very focused person, self-driven, humble, and well-spoken for the job ahead, mm. adding that she has what it takes to partner the flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama. Reacting to the comparisons between Professor Puku Ajiman and current Vice President Dr. Baumia, who is an economist, mm -hmm. Professor Butchway disagreed with suggestions that it is only persons with economics background mm. who are fit for the vice presidential position, adding that she has a proven track record to partner him in the December Meanwhile, elections. there's a group at Ewutu East calling for the suspension of our Kumsin story on citynewsroom.com. A group of residents in Ewutu Senya East constituency calling themselves the consent citizens of Kasua. They are demanding the suspension of their MP, Mibisa Wakumsin, following the role she played in a confusion in, at a voter registration center in the area. They insist that she engaged in acts of violence and dishonesty after she fired a gun at the registration center. They sent a, a petition mm -hmm. to the speaker mm -hmm. arguing for her suspension. Could you? Occupy Ghana is also pushing for an anti-vote buying bill. Okay. Now, the story is on page three of the new crusading guide. Mm. It says, pressure group Occupy Ghana is advocating for the Attorney General to consider preparing and sending a bill to Parliament mm -hmm. that criminalizes vote buying in the manner that it says is provided under Part 4, Chapter 5 of the Criminal Offences Act. Okay. Now, according to the group, in a letter addressed to the AG data 27 July this year, the phenomenon seems to be getting worse with every election cycle when politicians raise funds simply to distribute to party delegates, either in cash or in kind in exchange for their votes. It has gotten to a stage where it is the highest bidder who wins internal elections and primaries, mm. which have become the cocoa season for those unfortunate to be selected as uh, delegates. Mm. So, I, I join myself to yeah. that petition. Let me give you a quick special <laughs> report in the Ghana report. Nine medical prisoners and their babies at Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Story says, inside the maternity ward of Kolebu Teaching Hospital in Accra are nine nursing mothers whose most important question after sunrise is, how do I go home? They are medical prisoners. These women have been held there until they are unable to put their bills or philanthropists until they are able to put their bills or philanthropists bail them out. The women have the maternity wards as their new home. They owe a little more than 141,000 CDs. And then the, gov the story then gives the background to this issue. Some of the youngest is a 19-year-old woman. Uh, she's called Halimat Samun. She's 19, and she's been charged 13,150 CDs. And there's a 24-year-old <coughs> Paulina Ogbochuku. 1,500 cities for Caesarean, 28-year-old Winnie Osei. I think some of these things, NHIA should simply go and clear the <laughs> bill and free the women. You yeah. know, <laughs> the oldest is 34-year-old Veronica Mensa, who owes 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, 1,500 1, cities. And they spent at least two weeks in the hospital. Okay, there's an interesting story here. Push students on vacation to acquire skills, not extra classes. Mm. And this is the view of a very popular teacher in Kumasi, Sir Newton Kwesi. Hey. He teaches at Dose to two senior high school. Mm. He says that vacation classes should be abo abolished, basically, and that during vacations, uh, students should be made to learn okay. other things. I like that. Kuki, let me take your... Be There's a story I wanted yeah. people to check out on Bloomberg. Mm. So they interview Ken Oforiata, mm. and he's essentially saying that global investors are unfair to Africa, and he's asking that um, the inequities in the global financial infrastructure need to be addressed for African countries. And it's an interview he held with Ecordonto, published on July 28. Essentially, he's saying that the pandemic dealt a big blow to our GDP and that the way the global financial infrastructure is set up, it will be difficult for African countries to get the capital needed to develop. He also called for debt relief for African countries among other things. Mm, speaking of capital, let's look at capital that is being set aside for businesses. So the AGI is advocating flexibility mm. with the 2 billion Ghana CD guarantee scheme. Okay. The 2 billion Ghana CD guarantee program to support all sectors of business must be made flexible enough and should be able to provide up to 100% cover mm. for businesses if it is to achieve the intended impact. This is coming right. from the AGI. They say the move is positive. However, they're demanding more clarity. Thank um, you, Kokui. Thank you, Kojo. That's all we have time for for the segment. Coming up next is the City Business News. Stay with us. This is the City.